Here we go, one take wonder. Hello there, I'm Greg and I'm making cantina band costumes inspired by Star Wars. My mate Chris, my big best buddy Chris Lackey, had a big birthday and it was decided that birthday would be Star Wars fancy dress. I immediately bought a Mandalorian blaster using that as my reason that I just had to. That'll be a later video because I then decided we should, we being my wife and I, should dress as Bith. Figuring Don and one of his modal nodes. I decided to just do masks and instruments and clothes. Could have done gloves, but meh, didn't. Part one, which is this that you're watching now, is going to be the instruments. And then in part two, we'll see the masks. Uh, that's it. Here's the process. So I've gone through my bits. Got some corrugated pipe, a long thing that you're supposed to drink out of, which I've had for years and years. A pound shop petrol pump, thinking of using maybe this bit or possibly that bit. Nice metal rod, don't know where that's from, but I kept it. Thinking of using that to do the curve of the mouthpiece bassoon blowpipe. Old bits of a tripod, thread spindles from Heaven on Earth, which is a place called Scrap in Farsley near us. Kids' water bottle, quite like this sort of alien piece, being cool. It is thirsty work, you're right son. Old bit of caulking gun. Yes, I get hay fever, they're not too bad this year. It's only April the 4th. Honky horn things, these must be from the pound shop. A kid's telescope, two miniature like plant pots, so you can just kind of start making a sort of a nozzle. These are the lids from toilet cleaner. Pound shop hose parts. That's from our lamp, a nice fluted lamp part with some vents in it. A SpongeBob SquarePants torch. Although if you're thinking it looks like the muzzle from Bucky O'Hare's gun, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I might make that later, so I might save that. It's also a bit Dalek-y, isn't it? This is a honky horn, don't know. This is a kitchen plug thing. It just fits. It just fits, ladies and gentlemen. That's one of the great joys that you don't get from 3D printing because that's two strangers who I've introduced and they just they just hit it off. They just clicked and that's a wonderful thing. That's the top of a soap dispenser. That's the bottom of a soap dispenser. That's something. That's something. These are going to be useful because I want to put a keypad about halfway up the, the tube. So I think I'm going to use these to just easily attach it to the pipe. More hose parts. More hose parts. An old cafetiere. A piece of green pipe. Two lamp parts. That's a piece of shenanigan pedal. Whee! If you're a YouTube fan. This bottle of lemon juice which has a nice... Although is that just a slightly less nice version of that? You know what I'm saying. We're ready, let's go. Thanks, Greg. So this is one of my 16 80 litre storage boxes full of junk. Um, I've got two of toys, plastic stuff, wooden stuff, metal stuff, three of costume, one full of musical instruments, you'll see those later. And this is my pipes. I'm showing you my pipes. Uh, we got broom handles, mop handles, bits of drain pipe that were in my uncle's neighbor's skip and they were too good to pass up, so we went around and said, I think I said I was making a music video with ray guns in. It wasn't true. P people understand what a music video is, so if you ever need to raid a skip, use that as your reason. Yeah, so this is just looking for a pipe that will fit down the middle of a Hoover tube. It's the actual tool, the hoovering bit from the Hoover, from which this pipe came. So obviously never throw anything away. That's always the moral of these short films. And that goes in there very nicely. Well, what a very sunny day it turned out to be. I've just had lunch. Beans on toast. So here's where we're at. This is now rigid. It's got pipe all the way down. Spend about an hour stopping this from wobbling. So the, there's a broom handle down there that's wrapped in cardboard to make it fit there. And having that wood there is gonna be useful for screwing into, to attach the mouthpiece, the nozzle. So this is the little, little flower pot that's just hot glued there and round there. And then to sort of decorate that, where that gets smaller, this is just an extra large um, cable tie. Line side out, which I've attached with super glue, put a bit of, um, sprinkled it with baking powder to make a sort of concrete around the edge, sanded that but also put two screws in just to hold that because putting a ring around something is always a bit fiddly. So this needs uh, fixing because it's still not set. 
and then it's a question of putting all rings down and a sort of keyboard bit in the middle. So let's crack on. So this is that super glue, CA glue, cyanoacrylate glue, if you're nasty, um, and baking powder. I think powder, not soda. They're not the same. Uh, technique. Basically, the baking powder immediately sets the super glue and forms a, a concrete, like it's rock hard. You don't want to have to sand it because it's really rocky. But if you want something to be a kind of messy, kind of looks like a messy weld, and you want your watery super glue to be a gap filling glue, then I recommend sprinkling in baking soda. It's also a nice way of texturing smooth plastic or card or whatever to make it look kind of like hammered metal. Don't rub it in with your finger because you don't want the chemical reaction to happen on your finger. It's very exothermic, gets very, very hot. You'll feel like you're burning yourself even though you're not, but it, it's really hot and crusty. So just, just go easy. Brush it off with a brush, not your finger. And it looks like that. It's kind of glassy, it's like stone. It's rock hard and it sets the super glue immediately. So as long as you don't mind a bit of rough texture, that's a good technique to use. Learn that on YouTube, and now you have too. This is sticky backed craft foam, EVA foam. It's just very useful because it's sticky already. So the bottom of this pipe, the diameter's wrong to go into that uh, light fitting part that I'm just going to cap off the, the bottom of the tube with. So I'm just putting a little collar of EVA foam around the pipe to make it bigger. Simple enough. Then I fill the light fixture with hot glue, bit of super glue as well, I think, just around the lip. Put that on the bottom. Make sure it's out of frame. Never, never film yourself doing that. Um, and then dust off the baking powder, which if you get into the baking powder technique, you will be doing a lot because everything you make will be covered in dust. But it looks nice. It looks like a, like a rough weld. And then same technique, super glue and some hot glue as well, attaching the hose nozzle. Onto the keyboard bit. This is a nice, tough, rigid poster tube. Cut it down to the right length, slightly too big diameter for the pipe of the, the horn to go around the horn. So I cut out a, a, a strip and I'm now pulling it tight again using cable ties, which I'm tightening with my teeth. Always risk damaging your teeth if you possibly can. Yeah, so then Phillips head screws, lots of Phillips head screws in this project. I know that's a big sin in, in sci-fi, particularly Star Wars. Nothing I can do about it now. So yeah, lots of screws down the back and then just cut off the clamp part of the cable ties and it's affixed. I then covered that seam with another bit of big cable tie. There's a theme here. Um, but then realized I had to remove a couple of strips of it so that the two brackets would fit flush with the back of the pipe. So I'm now cutting away two little strips of it with my Dremel. Let's talk eye protection. Uh, you may think you're cute wearing your mum's auntie's old driving visor over your goggles, your, 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 your glasses, um, posting it to Instagram and aren't I great? But yeah, perhaps in 2007, you'll get some plastic around the back of your eyeball and you'll have to go to A&E and Dr. Sharif will have to turn your eyelid inside out over his fingertip and sort of scrape it with a, a plastic coffee stirrer. And you don't want that to have to happen to you. So cover your eyes. Glasses aren't enough because it, it kicks up. It kicks up, you know? And uh, yeah, having a bit of black shard of plastic around the back of your eye is a horrible thing. So th big thanks to our neighbor who left me some nice goggles hanging on the fence. And they're the ones I'm wearing forevermore when I cut anything. Bless his heart. More Phillips head screws, nothing more futuristic than that. Um, I do have some screw covers, didn't use them. Okay, so this is just a hunk of wood that I'm gonna make my keypad out of. Because it's going to be textured kind of hammered metal, I just thought use wood, wood grain won't matter because it's going to have textured paint over it and I'm going to edge it with things and... But obviously plastic or metal would have been a bit neater. Just rounding out the edges and corners with a, with a sanding stick and then, because I'm obviously sponsored by Big Cable Tie, I've used Big Cable Ties to make the edges look uh, a bit neater. Stuck on with super glue. This is how you measure something with a ruler. And that's how you write a number down. DVD boxes, a lovely source of cuttable plastic. Um, get rid of them. We score. We cut twice. We cut thrice and we're through. Textbook. Proud of him. Proud of that guy. Then finally, my, one of my many bits boxes. I'm using these stick on fake Scrabble pieces from the works hey, as my keys because they're round cornered bits of wood. Shh. <coughs> 
Good morning, it's day two of the project and I'm taking a step backwards. Um, I thought about editing this out but I thought, you know, do the whole journey, capture the whole journey. So basically overnight I've been thinking, there we are, that there is too wide and it's too far off the body of the thing and I just don't like it. So I've cut off these bits which held it on to lose some width. I'm going to cut them sort of flush with the body of the pipe and rather than that being that way I'm going to put it that way so it's a little bit narrower or is this bit still too chunky? I don't know this is a one day project but it's uh, day two and I can't decide and the sun's not shining anymore and <laughs> let's go it's all right. Uh, so yeah, cutting those brackets flush with the pipe, popping off the keypad that I cut out of that DVD box, which will now hide the two screws, which are the new way that I'm attaching the keypad to the horn. Uh, so a couple of the holes and then countersinking. Always lovely to countersink a screw. Went a bit overboard with the countersinking holes here, but they just need to be flush so that the keypad sticks flat. But yeah, get some countersinking bits, it's a, it's a powerful feeling. Uh, more Phillips head screws, of course, to hold on more giant cable ties. These are the big silver bands that go around. So put them all around, screw them through. And then there's a bit of screw hiding. I cut out these just little bits of cardboard, just little um, Frankfurter shaped bits of card colored in black, just so they don't have a white edge and then super glued them over the screws for a bit of neatness. The back of this thing is kind of a, it's kind of hot trash, but it doesn't matter. It's a fancy dress party, it doesn't matter. So the bassoon nozzle, I say nozzle a lot in this video and fluted, nozzle and fluted are the words of the week. The big curve is some pound shop brown paper tape, love brown paper tape, it's tactile. Uh, and the small curve, is it the bottom of a soap dispenser? No. Is it a toilet cleaner lid? No. Split the difference. He's got it. He's got it, folks. Um, it's a nice small curve. But yeah, I figured just draw this shape on a bit of paper and use that as my template. So bending time, this metal rod stuff that's like a, th it's like a three, a three part rod. I don't know what it is, but it bends. It's like, um, What's the word? Armature wire. It bends really nicely. So I'm just curving it around a plastic pipe here for the small curve. Wear gloves if you've got them. And then for the big curve, that's a metal toilet brush holder. Bent the mouthpiece with my bare hands. Hold it up, show it to the class. Well done. Well done. Very good. Yes, it matches. He's proud. So this was bendy. Just made an extra bit out of coat hanger. Sellotape that on to reinforce it threaded the corrugated pipe over it, cut off the excess. This is a bit of hay fever nose spray, you know, nozzle from the top of that thing, just to tidy up the end. And then to stop the tube sliding around on the metal piece, just bunged up the ends with lots of hot glue. I also stuck some matchsticks down there to make like a, a plug, but I didn't film that for some reason. But yeah, matchsticks and hot glue. <laughs> Here he is. So I've ordered some metal cable ties turns out they exist, for the thin silver bands on the clue horn, clue horn homage, not replica. While I wait for those to arrive, I'm gonna make the other one, hopefully as an actual one day build, not a three day one day build. So this one is inspired by a Chindinkalu flute, Chindinkalu, Chindinkalu flute, played by Droopy McCool, <laughs> <laughs> These names are funny to me. I lost, I mean, I love Star Wars. Do I love Star Wars? I love Star Wars. Droopy McCool from the Max Rebo band. I've just seen on Wikipedia that the music they play, well, they're called Jizz Wailers. That's on Wikipedia. So if I seem shocked or slightly reeling, that's why. And so this one's fun because it's even less of a copy of something. So I'm just making it out of bits. Very satisfying junk search. This is an old fluted bit of like ancient hoover that I've had for years, 50s, very beige, very brown. So this kid's megaphone fits in there 
dry fit, I think that's called, which is lovely. Pressure fit, that's what, not a dry fit, a pressure fit. This, I cut off the, uh, the kid's water bottle. So that bit's gonna go over there. That's gonna go in there. Again, dry fit. That um, plug thing just fits in there, which is lovely. That's a bit of hose nozzle. That I found inside a water pump bottle, but just a really nice ribbed piece of stuff. Maybe that, no, not that. And then this is just build it up as you go. We've got a sh We've got a shower curtain ring. We've got a bit of that portable pound shop petrol funnel. Might use this talking thing as a sort of outer. It's a bit clunky, McClunky. That maybe. This is quite nice. Then these little cardboard counters. I didn't like them because they're cardboard and they're bendy and they just came in a box of, I think I bought some mega blocks on Facebook Marketplace and it just had these in the bottom. But actually they're circles that bend. So I'm gonna use those as the bases for my keys. And then after painting, I'll put on these shiny screw covers as buttons. Da, da, da. No, end of the day, time to go and have some pizza. I'm happy with this. We've got megaphone, kids water bottle, hoover piece, child pirates, all the way, child pirates all the way up the shaft, a shower ring. This is the plastic ring off the front of a toy pirate gun. A vitamin bottle, some sort of plastic cap, don't know what that's from. Pirate, pirate, pirate. This is just a ring of cable tie. This again is from that petrol pump funnel. The cap of a water bottle, the inverted and cut off neck of a water bottle, and then the top of some toilet cleaner. Might add some sort of vertical rods as well, and then some buttons on this central, this bit here, and then a mouthpiece. These are two little pieces of old picture frame that again, I'm just rounding the corners, rounding the edges, making them look kind of like domino shapes. Uh, again, the buttons are gonna hide the screw hook, more countersinking. Just lovely, it's a lovely sensation. And these for the buttons I'm using are the little vent you get in a bag of coffee. Uh, I just like the shape of those, so every time we finish some coffee I save one and we drink a lot of coffee. This is five minute epoxy. It doesn't cure slash set in five minutes, but you've got five minutes sort of working time with it. it smells weird. Looks yellow, dries clear, it's good stuff. It's liquid plastic, it's very, very sticky. So I'm just putting that onto the underside of these keys and then hiding the screws on there. Oh, and there's also, I've added a, a pink, uh, the outside of a hair curler, a hair roller, round the back of the vitamin bottle, because it just fitted too well not to. So that's stuck on with super glue. This is called painting. Painting. Um, it's a sort of liquid pigment application. Uh, yeah, I'm stippling on, this is a chrome effect silver enamel paint that I'm stippling on thickly, so it has a kind of hammered... I didn't want brush marks, so I sort of just stippled it on. So here we're outside. I've primed the flute black. I didn't prime the clue horn. Don't make the mistake that I did. Prime. Always prime. Optimal priming. Um, because I just put the silver paint straight onto the plastic, even though I sanded the plastic a bit, this thing is prone to chipping. It likes to chip, it wants to chip, it wants to be scratched. And uh, I've regretted it ever since, and I'll regret it till my dying day. No amount of clear coat is gonna keep that paint on there. Can't go back. So this is, now we've painted the flute black, I'm just sanding the bits I want to be silver so that the silver paint will grip, will hold, will form a nice skin with this stuff. They call it Scotch Bright in America. I don't know what it's called here, but it's it's wire wool. It's that terracotta sort of clay colored scrubby, scrubby wool stuff. So once I've done the silver bits, it's time to start making it look kind of old. This is just sort of a scuffling, scumbling dry brush with silver. So I get most of the silver off the brush and a bit of paper and I'm just sort of scuffing it all over the black to make the black have a bit of life. And tell a story. I've just got to tell a story. These are these uh, click-on screw head covers. So you put the screw through the little triangular collar thing, a couple of dots of CA glue, super glue, 
and it just clicks on like that and they look quite nice right metal cable ties I'm sure they're good for something but I wouldn't use these for this again they're not that grippy even when you pull them as tight as as tight can be they're not that grippy so in the end I had to I didn't film this because this is my secret shame I had to do like a spine of hot glue to hold all the silver bands in place which I of course then hid with a, a cable tie so there's like a, a silver strip down the back that I never wanted to be there but because they're on the outside of a corrugated strip also don't cut them with the nice flush snips that your wife got you for Christmas show some respect these are some nice brass and copper furniture nails to make buttons cut down the rod don't like cutting metal it's hot and noisy so I didn't feel myself bending the metal but I bent this metal bar around a metal pipe then cut a notch there into the shower ring to hold it. It's not even a shower curtain ring, it's just a curtain ring. The keypad, I say shower curtain ring or shower ring about four oh. times. Where it's at a right angle, it goes into the body of the pipe. Then I've also stuck two metal drinking straws there and there and just held them on underneath with lots of super glue and baking soda and big blobs of uh, hot glue at the top. Weathering. Weathering is the fun part. Everyone says it and it's true. Um, generally, I think when you're making a prop, you're making the factory fresh version, the one you just bought from the shop, but then you need to give it 20 years of being on the road out there in among the stars. So it's got a lot of space grime, space dust, space oil. It's had cocktails poured into it at, you know, Jabba's wedding. So this is brown and black mixed together, acrylic paint, a little bit of um, washing up liquid dish soap the soap is a flow improver i've learned this from youtube um just makes it run into all the nooks and crannies better and nooks and crannies is what this is all about fill your nooks and crannies and then we dab we dab off just checking the, the viewfinder that i'm doing that correctly yes i am we dab that off you don't want to wipe it off unless you want streaky like smears you want to just but yeah do this to all your toys, kids. They'll look more cool. Ask for permission first, obviously. But yeah, I used to do this when I was a child. But now I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so weathering. I'm going to try oil washes in my next video. Apparently they're better, but this is just acrylic craft paint. It's burnt umber and Mars black. Just gives it a bit of life. And it kind of turns up the contrast in your eyes. All your lines and edges and corners just it pops the most useful verb when describing anything visual getting better it pops so very cheap brush very cheap paint oh, i could have covered those screw heads i could have done but again fancy dress party so doesn't matter it went down great we had a blast <laughs> And finally, because the black wash kind of dulls down the colours a little bit, this is a liquid chrome pen. Can't recommend liquid chrome pens enough. They are the best silver pen. And it's just running it down the edge, makes the edge look sharper. Again, makes all the details kind of pop and the contrast just ping. And sort of makes things look scratched. So if you want any metal to look a little bit chipped or like it's just caught the edge of something, just run some silver down the edge and it looks wicked. These instruments look wicked. Positivity all the way. And that's it. That's, oh, no it's not. I haven't put the sound on. <laughs> so before we see the finished thing, this episode's YouTube channel recommendation is Studson Studio. That's Studson Studio. Um, you probably know his stuff already if you like this kind of thing, but if you don't, seek out that channel. It's wonderful stuff. <laughs> And that's it, episode one, done. Thanks so much for watching, if you've watched this far, which you obviously have, because I'm talking to you. I don't know where we go from here, you and me. Uh, 
I might do a Patreon. I have a Ko-Fi, if you'd like to buy me a cup of Ko-Fi, as I pronounce it. There'll definitely be a part two. I've got about 10 other projects on the go. I might even make a sort of randomizer wheel to just pick which project to work on. But I've got a Ghostbusters thing. I've got a couple of Red Dwarf things. I've got a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy thing. And they're all ticking over. Please do let me know if you've enjoyed this, because it matters. Positive feedback matters. Pride matters. I'm a big, very evangelical about pride. I think it's good for you. So yeah, if people are interested, I'm going to keep going because this is fun. Thanks for watching. Lots of love. And I'll see you soon.